Okay, so now this video is gonna be longer because we'll be adding movement and attacking to our opponent AI. Alright, so as you know that we have four attack animations, okay? And we want the opponent to play that attack animations randomly. Okay, one by one. So for that what we're gonna do is right down below we will create a method by the name of create random number. In here the random number integer which we created right there will be equals to random dot range and the range will be from 1 to 5 make sure it is from 1 to 5 not from 0 okay then you can click on fighting controller and drag and drop all of this four methods from there and paste it right down below this create random number and also you can get back right here and copy this perform touch front method as well and paste it right above the create random number and in this dodge we will remove this if condition and remove that bracket from down below move it back the animation name is the same this uh, this we will change to minus transform dot forward because when we play this animation we want the uh, opponent to move back okay to dodge in the backward direction there so that's why we use this minus sign this basically calculates movement direction in the backward okay then instead of this instead of applying uh, movement what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply force Okay, we will apply force instead of directly moving just to the opponent. You can also do this for your player if you want. So I'm gonna right here type character controller dot simple move and I'm gonna pass the dodge direction to it. After this, if you get back to the fighting controller script back again from here what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this perform attack method as well and right here paste it okay right at the top after the variables so the name will be the same everything as well we just need to remove this if condition and also this else condition okay remove that fully We just need these four lines okay so first of all we will trigger the animation then after that we will apply damage and show it in the console for now because we are not uh, applying damage to the player for now okay so just leave this as it is okay now once you do all of that this is all the similarity with our fighting controller now we need to perform attacks and everything okay so first of all in the awake method when the game starts we want to call the create random number okay then create an update method okay I will explain um, this update whole method when we complete it once okay and as you know that these things were similar to our fighting control script so I hope you understand what is happening in there because I've already explained that in our fighting controller video now whatever happens in the update method I will explain it at the end okay so first of all right here in the update method first of all we will add movement but at the top right here make this character controller a public and the animator a public as well and when you do that then you can scroll down in the update method let's go ahead and add the movement okay so we will add a for loop in which we will create an integer i which will be equals to zero then we will say that if i is less than the fighting controller dot length 
then I++. Okay. After this, we will move towards the player if it's active. Okay. We will move the opponent towards the player if the player game object is active. So we will first of all check it. For that, you will have to type player. Actually, let me check. It is players. Okay. So players dot game object dot active self then in here we will create a vector 3 by the name of direction and the direction will be players dot i dot position from the transform dot position of the opponent and we will normalize this direction okay after this we will create a character controller uh, not create we will call the character controller dot move method to which we will pass the direction and multiply that by the movement speed and then multiply that by time dot delta time all right so this is the movement now let's rotate the opponent towards the player so for that we will create a quadronian by the name of target rotation all right this will be equals to quadronian dot look rotation let's pass the direction then we will say transform dot rotation equals to quadronian dot lerp let's pass transform dot rotation and then the target rotation then the rotation speed and multiply that by time dot delta time okay once we have the rotation then let's play the walking animation so for that we will say animator dot set pool we want to set the walking to true all right that's it now let me explain what we did right here so first of all this line right here initialize a for loop that will iterate over each element in the fighting controller array the loop starts with i which we set it equal to zero and continue as long as i is less than the length of the fighting controller array all right then right here this condition check if the game object corresponding to the i element of the players uh, array in is active in the scene okay we check if all the players that is in this players array okay so whatever player is active in this array we will check for that player okay so if any player is active then what we're gonna do we move towards the player we rotate towards the player and then we play the walking animation okay so now let me explain right here what these two lines will do so the first one the first line uh, calculates the direction from the opponent current position which is transform dot position to the i player position okay then it then uh, normalize this direction vector ensuring it has a magnitude of one which is uh, useful for consistent movement then this line right here move the opponent in the calculated direction it uses character controller dot move to move the opponent character controller in the direction determined by the direction scale by the movement speed and adjust it from frame frame rate with time dot delta time then right here this quadronian dot look rotation calculate the rotation needed to face direction and the quadronian 
dot lerp smoothly interpolates between the opponent current rotation and the target rotation over time controlled by the rotation speed and time dot delta time and then right here we set the walking boolean to true in our animator controller which then plays the walking animation okay simple as that now if we get back right here all right to Jin Kazuma we need to provide the character controller so drag and drop that then the animator and when you do both of that then it needs the attack one effect leave the effects as it is for now and the attack animations are already added in the fighting controller drag and drop Eddie and it will automatically select the script for now we just have one player so it will be just Eddie in both of them okay then let's change the movement speed to 2 and change the attack cooldown to 2 or 3 okay this will th this is the pause time between each attack so you can either leave it on 2 or 3 okay now you will know what this will do once we add attacking to our opponent for now we just have the movement so we added the player transform and the player script and now let's check it out if the opponent walk towards the player or not okay there is the opponent walking towards the player as you can see it keeps walking and walking but now as you know that the walking works perfectly fine what we're gonna do now is the player the opponent will walk towards the player and then we will stop this opponent in the attack radius and then these this opponent will stop at that position and try to attack the player okay but that will be in the next video for now walking works perfectly fine as you can see the opponent follows the player and rotates as well perfectly fine as you can see Okay, that's it.